I'm Dylan, the owner of EMC Fab, and um, in today's video, uh, I'm starting to um, assemble uh, one of our um, budget after after many motors of testing our 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 budget build low boost front wheel drive SR20. Um, build. We're going to start with the bottom end and just kind of work our way up. Take it slow and easy and give you guys everything that I know and we'll go from there. I mean, we'll start, we'll just, we'll just fucking start off with kind of from the block here. Now, obviously, number one that I like to tell people is that I am an absolute nut for cleanliness when it comes to building anything. And uh, I mean, seriously, like, I mean, the, the, the more clean you are when you're building an engine, um, it really pays off because you're there. It's just the longevity of the motor increases a lot and there's nothing to worry about of any kind of dirt debris or anything. I mean, anybody will tell you that. You just want to make sure everything's clean when you assemble it and prep it. So, I mean, right now, here's the block. Um, uh, essentially, what we'll do first is bead blast the whole block, freshen it up, and it helps you. When you clean things, you can really see what's going on and, like, any defects or anything that you need to fix. So the, the only two things that aren't... Um, that aren't stock are the bearings and the piston rings i mean the piston rings i say not stock because this is obviously a de block they, you know front wheel drive was never turboed so when i do a budget on when i do a budget build the easiest way to make it safer boost is the pistons and like the you know the sr20 bottom end is still pretty tough and can handle some power so you don't have to do anything to that like around you know i would say 300 350 um is a good like a really good bulletproof number to stay at safe spot to stay at um but if you order um uh det nissan oem piston rings they're already pre-gapped because that's you know from the factory that's and low boost like a you know 7 to 10 12 is getting like 12 and 15 is pushing that i think um for like stock ring gap for a det piston ring another thing here i've never run into this before i've never had a problem with this myself but the next part here, let me pull this out here it's Mazworks makes a threaded um, timing chain oil squirter. And I've never, like I said, I've never experienced this myself, but if you're ever wanting to run high oil pressure, like, a, a, you know, I, I run Valvoline VR1, and it's usually, I'll usually run a 1030, but if you're looking, this... This build will probably see 2050. So at very high oil pressures, Mazwerk states that the factory oil timing oil squirter is press fit. And sometimes they've seen that shit pop out before under a lot of oil pressure when it gets hot and fall down and could cause your timing chain to break, like catch into there and break and it just, it, it'd be a mess. But it's a very rare occasion. I've never personally, out of all the motors that I've built, I mean, technically, I only ran 2050 once on the last set build for, you know, a couple thousand miles and then read up on it and then got kind of spooked and then switched back to 1030. So I've never, I've never ran 2050 and had the timing chain or else going to pop out. But it's something that they've come across. So when I say bulletproof, like I've gone through almost like literally like I've gone through as much as I know and pretty much that I think I have like no to 
like all the safety things and all the little nitpick things that you need to know to make sure that um, there's nothing wrong and nothing weird will happen. As far as machine work goes, we do a half a half by 14 um, NPT uh, pipe thread to do a 10 an um, uh, fitting. Yeah, you have have to like a half inch to you know pipe thread to 10 an for the oil drain, and then there is usually a plug here, and this will end up being the water feed line for the turbo as well, and uh, I think that's. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's gonna be a, it's either an M12 or an M14 uh, by one and a half. I think it's an M12 by one and a half or it's an M14 by one and a half. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but um, that's that gets threaded in. So you have your turbo water feed line machine in the block and then the turbo oil drain. And I end up using the turbo water return into the upper neck on the head and then obviously the um the turbo oil feed will come directly from the um oil filter um redistribution block that it gets i'll show that down the road but it's just um by mpi it's just a oil distribution block because i also we relocate the oil filter down into the corner of the engine bay around here so you know but that's pretty much as far as and then um skim the head surface cylinders honed as well that's pretty much it for the bottom end so we're gonna go ahead and start putting everything in I'll show you in a sec. I've already, uh, so we're, I'm already at the uh, piston installation and um, kind of switch over once I've got this, once I you know, explain this here for a second. But it's also like when you're doing this, it's really important to um, make sure that the piston ring gaps are in the you know in the right spot in the right orientation to in reference to the front locator pin of the of the piston um, and any manual will tell you that either uh, the OEM Nissan FSM or I've got my Haynes manual here that explains that that shows that um, so yeah you just make sure the rings are in that right spot and 
Um, that's what we'll do now. And then once you get those rings set, and then we just, you know, use good old fashioned ring piston ring tool and and uh, we'll set it down in there. And the oil ring is definitely a bitch. And what, as you can see what I'm doing now, I've found that it's a little easier to, I mean, you can either get a, a pick or, you know, any kind of small pointed object. I've got a razor blade and a small, really thin screwdriver here, but essentially if you try to spin the bottom or the top oil ring, the expander ring in the center will move with it. So you have to hold the center expander ring with your with one small tool pick, whatever, you know, in this instance I'm using my razor blade to hold that while I spin the bottom ring pins here or this you know that there's the dot you have end gap on the top ring end gap on the second ring and then you have the top thin oil ring here and then the oil ring expander the center one here and then the bottom oil ring in this corner. So if you didn't, if you don't have an FSM, that's that's what you want to do. So play that back if you need to watch that again. But that's that's to get those rings set where they're supposed to be. free spin check and um, it feels really good and there's no binding and no hard spots and it spins really good so I feel confident about that bottom end all the piston rings everything the cylinder it feels good so we're gonna move on and just keep fucking building this thing
All right, we got the short block assembled. Just finished installing the um, upper and lower oil pan and uh, got the uh, timing chain all wrapped up around here and uh, just about ready to install the head. Now I did forget, because this is technically the block, Mazrix also makes a crankcase breather um, a uh, little 90 adapter essentially slips in here with an o-ring and it comes out and so you can with a straight cut so you can do like a 10 an big fat um you know crankcase breather to your valve cover or whatever and that's what i did so um you gotta if you install that like if you do that you have to put that on first before the head goes on or else um you can't install it so you have to install that before the head goes on so um, we'll put that on and then uh just brake clean the surface of the head to make sure that it's completely clean no oil no debris no dirt you make sure that that surface is fucking perfect and um and then throw on the head gasket and uh throw the head on <laughs> 